Hi, everyone. This is Brittany Bond. Welcome back to the podcast. I am so excited to share this very juicy episode with you guys about sex. So this is something that I feel very strong about um, because I have had so much sexual suppression in my life. And also, I'm a very sexual person. If you're into astrology, I'm mostly Scorpio in my chart, um, which just means that we really like sex. (laughs) And uh, being raised as a woman in a cult and and also just a woman in this world that's like kind of a mind fuck you know like really enjoying sex like oh my god she's super into pleasure like what a naughty girl so this podcast is kind of just all of my (laughs) very non-linear downloads about sex and also some ranting about how I feel that people are having pretty terrible sex and also how I would love for all of you guys to have more pleasure and all of you to really feel safe in your bodies and I feel that it is the biggest rebellious act that we can do in the world is to take back our pleasure and to really allow ourselves to enjoy sex especially as women this podcast is for everyone for men and women I think everyone should listen to this and um, but I'm gonna give a special shout out especially to women because I think that this is our time to rise into our pleasure and by rising I mean feeling juicy in our bodies and settling back and allowing ourselves to gently unfold and receive all of the pleasure so as I like to do in the beginning of my podcast I invite all of you guys to take a deep breath with me and so exhale everything out and then breathe into your belly all the way up through your chest and imagine all the air going straight up through your head and then holding it at the top like and hold and squeeze your pelvic bone muscles as much as you can and then letting it all out and whatever sounds need to come out whatever emotions need to come out they are all welcome and loved and held space for so I invite you to take another deep breath with me and hold it at the top and then let it out and Before we get started, I really want you to invite you to notice how you feel in your body. Because we run around throughout the whole day being like, I need to be productive. And I just am like, this is all bullshit unless you are actually enjoying it in your body. So when I say notice how you're feeling in your body, it's like what sensations are coming up in your body right now? Like for me right now, I'm in, (laughs) okay, if you are not seeing this on visual I wore my bathing suit because I feel very sexy in my bathing suit and my cat ears and these are like little cat ear uh bent uh, headband and I just am like feeling really good in my body but then I notice when I sit here that like my bathing suit's kind of stretching out a little bit and at any moment it might fall off (laughs) and so I'm noticing that my shoulders are a little bit tense because I'm like trying to keep my bathing suit from falling off So these are what I mean by like, what sensations are you feeling in your body? So do you feel any tingling? Do you feel warm? Do you feel anything? It can be hot, cold, like sensation, a tightness, a relaxing, anything. And just whenever you feel it and you notice it, just you can mentally uh, and energetically say, I honor you. So we don't need to change it. We don't need to fix it. It's just about creating space for it and telling ourselves, I honor you, you know, whatever needs to be in my body right now is allowed and supported and held space for. Okay, so sex, 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 sex. It is like one of the biggest things that we all think about, even if it's subconsciously, um, because it's like one of the most beautiful forms of connection that we can have in this world with someone and it feels so good and it feels and also it's such a spiritual thing you know we are spiritual creatures having a human experience in these bodies these 3d bodies but our our actual most of us is in the spiritual world and one of the biggest ways that we can connect to someone 
through our energy bodies and through the spiritual world is actually through sex. So this is why even subconsciously, it's such a beautiful big deal for all of us, you know, like, and then also in the physical 3D bodies, it just feels so good to have sex. So yeah, I I made some notes. So I'm going to occasionally look down at my notes and read some stuff. Because, so one of the things I put in the beginning that I really want to say out loud, I was like, I've been talking to Faraday about my boyfriend about this podcast since it came to my mind to make it because I was like, what are, like, I've just been hearing people talk about their sex lives and their lack of sex lives and all the stuff that is fucked up around it. And I'm like, so sad when I hear people having like these really terrible sex lives. And I'm like, what are people doing? <laughs> like, And then I think, wow, then maybe they just don't know, you know, and maybe they just don't know there's another option and there's another way or maybe they don't know how to get there to have a better sex life. And then I thought, okay, it is my service to the world. I want to share all of the things that at least I know and I've come to. Um, so the first thing I want to say is, you know, the world is having a spiritual awakening right now. Like people are waking up to the fact that their lives are not about just waking up and going to work and securing their basic needs. That's how we have been for many centuries um, to, you know, have the point of life is to have more material possessions, have security and like provide for your family. We are through the industrial revolution and through AI and through like ourselves just becoming more spiritually aware. We're realizing that this is not just the point. The point is to grow spiritually and have consciousness evolve. And so people are, what I I put in quotations, are waking up to this. You know, they're having spiritual awakenings and they're like, wow, I'm understanding more of the reason why I'm in this 3D body having an experience on this timeline. What I would like to say to that is, what is the point of waking up if you're not having good orgasms? And what I mean by that is like, what is the point of having this full awareness? Like I think of like monks in like monasteries, like meditating and da da da. And like, that's great. I'm, I'm so happy for them that they're like pulling all of this consciousness through their bodies. My counter to that is to say, we can do that in a way where we're fully receiving pleasure. We can be fully awake and also have amazing orgasms. And this is what I have done all of my life. Like I just happened to pop out very awake. I was like a very sensitive, awake child. And I just thought that everyone was like experiencing these great orgasms and using it to like further their spiritual advancement and like going into other timelines and going to the knowingness of source energy. And then I'm looking around, I'm like, oh, what people are not doing is what is good. So yeah, I just want to put that statement out there. What is the point of being fully awake if you are not using that to connect back to yourself, your body, the person that you love and having amazing orgasms. And like, for me, orgasm is like fully enjoying our 3D experience and like the way that we were made to, you know, like celebrating life, like allowing life force energy to come through us, come through our partner, whoever we're having sex with, and like merging it together and making it one plus one equals infinity and like pulling in all of this wisdom and knowledge through our bodies in a way that is so pleasurable for us. So what I would say is that if you're, if you If you feel like you're not having good sex, so most people who are listening to this are probably like, I'm not having great sex or my sex could definitely be better, you know, my sex life or whatever. And what I would say to you is that the first step is not about the technical things. It's not about any, the first step is creating a safe space for your body. So uh, what I would ask you is in your, if you think about like your sex life or any sexual encounters you've had with yourself through masturbation um, or through like having sexual intercourse with someone else in any way do you feel safe in your body in those moments when you are about to make love how does your body feel is it 
are you actually dropped into your body? Do you, do you know what that means? So these, this is, this is, I think the thing that we need to work on. It's not about like, can someone finger someone else really well? Or like, how does someone do oral sex very well? It's like, do I feel connected to my body right now? Am I feeling safe in my environment, in this room, in this, in, with this person, like emotionally and physically, do I feel safe? Um, because when you do feel safe, then you are allowing your body to open up, like open up your energetic aura, your physical body, you're emotionally open. And then you can, what I call experiment with what brings you more pleasure. And the reason why I like to say the word experiment is because it's all one big game. We're just like playing a game of like, "Mm, this feels good. Mm, No, that doesn't actually feel good. But you know, I'm happy I tried it. And then we take away the judgment of, I need to do this thing in order to receive pleasure. And like whenever we create this, like it has to be this way, then what's the point of even, it's a game. It's like, if we're just already going into it, like I have to have it be this way, then you're taking all the fun out of it. But most people have a really hard time allowing themselves to be open enough to experiment so they're already so not feeling safe in their bodies. They're like read somewhere online or they watch some porn and they were like, so those people seem like it's working for them. So I'm just going to do that thing and it has to work. And even if it doesn't actually feel good in my body, I'm just going to keep going. And I'm like, no, stop. Like just stop everything, everything you're doing. And then the second thing I'll say is that, um, you know, if, if it doesn't feel good for sex or if you're kind of like have written off sex in the way, what I mean by that is like, you're just like, sex is not for me or like, you know, whatever, then it's probably because you've never had space held for you emotionally for you to drop into your body and to feel safe. And this is possible for everyone. Every single person in the world, I'm going to tell you this right now, and you can disagree with me or not, but I have done a lot of research on sex. I don't know if anyone realizes this, but I'm going to tell you more about, but like, this is like a thing. People don't talk. If you know me personally, you know, like I fucking love talking about sex. I organize play parties. I organize sex parties and I'm, I'm here for other people's sexual empowerment. So through that, through my own personal experience of my own timeline and also through my own research, I've read all the things on sex and also through hosting spaces for people to drop into their bodies and feel safe to experiment with their sexuality I have heard all of the things and what I've come to is that every single person has the opportunity to have multiple orgasms in one setting they have the opportunity to have all of the pleasure and all of it comes down to do they feel safe in their bodies and another thing I really want to say here is that when you look at society, when you look at religion, when you look at governments, the biggest way for them to disconnect us and control us is through our sexuality. I was raised in a cult. I was raised as, Je- as Jehovah's Witness, which means it was not allowed to have sex unless you were married to someone. They were always monitoring how close you got to someone physically, emotionally, like they really, really did not want you to have a pleasure. Masturbation was so looked down on that like there are Jehovah's Witnesses, especially men, like young boys who were raised as Jehovah's Witnesses that were committing suicide because they felt so bad that they were masturbating. Like imagine this is the timeline that I was raised in and I saw very firsthand how it was used to control us. And then also I was raised in the United States where right now the whole abortion thing is going off where like the government is trying to take away our right to have an abortion, which is also taking away our rights to our bodies. And then birth control is really a thing where like most insurance, like in the United States, the insurance is not covering most of the birth controls for women. So all of this is controlling what you do with your sexuality. And I think a lot of people blame and also and the biggest thing they do is they try and blame it on you like you are still in charge of your sexuality but we're going to make you feel shame and guilt and we're going to make it really hard for you to enjoy your pleasure but it's still all on you and what I want to say is coming from an environment where it has been so controlled and so shamed and so made like to feel terrible about wanting to receive pleasure I saw through all of it and I was like this is bullshit 
And I'm like, I'm going to take back my pleasure. I want to feel good in my body when I'm receiving pleasure. So the more that you are embodied, the more that you will enjoy it. So if you don't know what it means to be embodied, it means like you are allowing your as much consciousness as you can hold like through your body. So the best way to do this, I have so much to say, I'm like getting really excited. So the best way to imagine this is if you are in a space where you can close your eyes for a second, I invite you to close your eyes and imagine a golden warm light coming from the top of your head through your body, through your head, through your chest, all the way down your body, through your tailbone and into the ground. This is life force energy going through you. Even from a scientific perspective, we know that we are all made of atoms. We are all just these vibrating atoms that are vibrating so quickly that it creates a 3D experience. And so when you understand that everything is vibration, everything is energy, then you start realizing that you can move the energy through your body in certain ways by focusing your consciousness. In order to do this, you have to feel relaxed in your body. The worst thing that you can do is to tighten up because then that energy cannot flow through your body. So you're not even in the game anymore if you're tight and you're not feeling safe. There's nothing wrong with that. All it is is becoming aware of that, allowing it in, and then choosing to create safe spaces in your life for yourself first, and then choosing people in your life that you feel safe around. I have many podcasts about this, about who to choose, how to create your soul tribe, all of that. This one is going to be focusing specifically about sex. So we're going to just go straight into sex. So for me, um, I, I want to say something. I'm just moving my notes one second. I'm going to put this up in. Um, for me, I have been masturbating since I understood, b- since before I understood what sex was. So I probably, like the first time I really remember masturbating, I was probably like six, maybe five or six. And it's because my mom, my mom's very in tune with me. And she was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. And for me, like when I would first start masturbating, I would just like, okay, so this is, I've researched this since then. And so I will tell you that there's, most people are so disconnected from their bodies that they need a lot of physical contact in order to feel, to give themselves permission to orgasm. But orgasming is just moving your energy through your body in a way where it creates a buildup and then a release and a release in a very pleasurable way. And orgasm, if you look into like spirituality, and even science, they have proven now that orgasming clears out your energy field and even from a physical standpoint can clear out a lot of negative things in your body. And so it's a very healthy thing to do is to orgasm, right? So let's just like, we're going to put that there. Orgasming is clearing out your energy, bringing in this warm golden light in a way that feels really juicy in your body. And there's this climax. And when the climax happens, you release and you also release toxins in your body. You release um, positive endorphins, which is like the happy endorphins in your brain, serotonin that goes through your whole body. So as a kid, so most people are not in their body. So they think they have to have physical, physical connection or to orgasm. I have done research on this because as a kid, I was able to come to orgasm with very little physical touch just by me, like feeling really good in my body and imagining, I was just like, as a kid, like moving the energy through my body. And I was just like, "Mm, this feels juicy. And I would like cross my legs and just kind of like hump a little bit, like move, gyrate my, if you see the video, I'm like doing this right now. And I would just kind of like move the energy through my pelvic area and just like feel it going up my body. And I would like squeeze my pelvic muscles as a kid. I now know that this is kundalini, (laughs) but being five or six years old, I didn't know what I was doing. And I would just do it all the time. And then I would just like be like, "Mm, mm." and then I would like be like, why is this feeling so good? And then, you know, and then I would climax like orgasmic, but this is energy, energy, energetically I was climaxing. And I just remember my mom being like, what are you doing? (laughs) Because she could tell that I was doing something that I don't know. I don't even know. I'm like, what did my mom think? I mean, she, 
but she was also so in the programming of my religion that I think she was just really wanting to protect me because my mom was actually a very spiritual person like outside of the religion like you know growing up we took a lot of she would always like take she'd grow our own food and we should take us into the nature and connect to nature she was kind of a witch in her own way and like was always giving us herbs and you know would like whenever I was sick or something bad would happen and I was far away from her she'd call me and like energetically she could understand that something had happened and so we were very connected and I think she could tell that something was going on with me and she just wanted to protect me so I remember her telling me when I was little like we don't do that in public or like you know I think it was in my living room or something I was just like kind of like masturbating energetically in my living room as like a six-year-old and I just remember that was the first time I remember it because it was the first time I remember thinking oh I need to hide this or like this is not okay you know and then since then like in my years of researching sexuality I have read about women who can you know these studies they have done where they've interviewed women where they literally can without like just sitting normal on a park bench can sit and think about something and they can bring themselves to climax to orgasmic climax energetically and physically in their body just through thinking about something so not actually physically touching themselves and I was like oh I'm just kind of like these women (laughs) you know so but imagine being raised in a cult where sexuality is so suppressed and, you know, no one talking to me about sex or anything, not even understanding what sex was. And then just like <laughs> having so much sexual energy. Um, I remember the first time I understood what sex was, was in my seventh grade science class. So seventh grade, I was probably like 10. And um, the teacher had these two slides. Like, so back in the day... Uh, I don't know who's listening to this now, but we had these like overhead slides and they were like pieces of transparent um, paper. And he had like one that was a penis and one that was a vagina. And he was like sliding them back and forth on the overhead. And he's like, so this is what sex is. And I remember all of us just being like, ew, gross. Because one, we were programmed that that's embarrassing. And also having that heard from my teacher who I didn't know very well I just was like this is a weird and I remember this because I was like this is a weird way to find out what sex is but I'm also happy that someone told me what it was and (laughs) and and then I at the time I was like um I was just kind of grossed out by the idea of like a guy putting his you know, his penis in me because I already had gotten to the point where I could climax on my own. So I was like, why do I need someone else in this situation? Like I'm doing great on my own. And then something I need to put into this podcast is that at the same time I was being sexually molested by a neighbor. So I, he would pick me up and tell my parents that I was mowing his lawn, like, and cutting his lawn. And um, he would have me sit on his lap and watch porn with me on his lap while he was touching my vagina and masturbating and stuff. And this is something that I wasn't even consciously allowing myself. Like I knew it all through high school and I ended up going to the police and reporting him when I was like 18 and he got charges against him. And like, I was really proud of myself that I spoke up, but I, you know, again, imagine and I'm, I'm speaking this because there's probably so many who are listening to this that have had similar things. Like you not only are not taught in your society what sex is, it's something that's kind of taboo and shamed. And then, and then we have people who are like molesting us and like creating these really unsafe spaces for us to be exposed to sexuality. And then that's kind of like your first imprint of like what sexuality is. And so for me, I'm super happy that I already kind of had a sexual relationship with myself before I was starting to be abused. Because for most people, if they've never really like had a sexual relationship with themselves and then they're sexually molested, that is their first introduction into what sexuality is. And so that's already fucked up, you know, and then and then there is something that happens to us when we're little and we don't understand why adults are hurting us that we automatically blame ourselves. And so it's like, oh, well, you know, for me, I just remember my dad was in the hospital. He had cancer. My mom was the first time she was working. She was really stressed out. And I just remember being like, okay, I don't want to bother them with what's happening to me. And I just kept it to myself. I didn't tell anyone until I told the, the police like 10 years later. And that is not sexually empowered. That's not empowering in any way, but imagine how that imprinted my sexuality. And also like 
I haven't watched that much porn in my life, but like my first, one of my first real impressions of sexuality with, with two people having sex was pornography. And I also know that most people, most kids these days were raised in an environment where pornography is their first introduction into sexuality. And uh, Faraday, my boyfriend and I have been talking about this, like kind of in the preparation for me getting ready for this podcast. And I've been trying to explain it because I think so many, so many men do not realize what this does to them, especially men, because I think more men watch porn than more men, women, women also watch porn, but I think men are, there's so much pressure for men to feel like they need to perform and they need to understand what sex is and like how to actually do it. And so they think, oh, porn is a good way to educate myself. And then it's like the most fucked up brainwashing that you can do is watch porn. Um, so Faraday sent, because he's also like coming, waking up to this. And so he sent me this post today that I want to read to you right now about porn. This guy on Instagram who's a, I don't know, life coach or whatever. But he said, this guy wrote, men, porn has conditioned you to believe that physical intimacy comes before emotional intimacy, which causes you to expect your partner to rush into sex and fulfilling fulfilling your needs before she's even felt safe and connected and emotionally close to you and this is so true like if you look at pornography like it's like okay penetration like and then the woman's like going "Ah, ah," and it's like totally fake like if you watch porn I want you to ask yourself how do you feel in your body after you watch porn because usually they hook you so much by just the the openness of sexuality being on a screen like that's already turning someone on like wow like people are having sex like I'm like wow that's actually really cool I think it'd be fun to have beautiful some someone making love on the screen like be there but when when it's like men okay let me read the rest of this and then I'll talk to you so he said one of the biggest lies is that porn promotes is the emotional intimacy is not an essential aspect of physical intimacy So this couldn't be further from the truth as emotional intimacy is vital in creating love and a healthy relationship. Men who believe this lie often find themselves struggling to connect with their partners and lack and lack their relationship skills to build emotional intimacy and closeness. So men by watching porn, they are programmed to believe that and they legitimately think that this is real. Like there's no, 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 I'm not putting any blame on men. I'm like just saying we're being brainwashed is that they're like, well, if I have physical sex with my partner, then this will mean that she will love me more, you know? And when in reality, all of us, men, women, everyone, aliens, all of us want connection. All of us want to feel safe in our bodies. All of us want emotional connection first. When you have emotional connection first, then the physical stuff just organically happens. And this is where I'm like, wow, like imagine if we had a reality where instead of like, I always joke with my girlfriends where I'm like, I don't understand how people have sex. They're just like, um, avoiding you know kind of emotionally avoiding each other and not really telling like I'm imagining like a so normal people going on a date they're like kind of like dancing around the fact if they like each other or not like a first date and they're kind of like mm, giving each other little hints but not really like emotionally saying like yeah I find you really beautiful or like I love our connection and then they're just like you know drinking uh, taking substances like weed or any other substance and then they just like they're just kind of like what falling into bed and like fumbling around with their clothes and taking it off and then just like jumping on each other. And I'm like, where is the emotional safety in this? Like I would feel so unsafe if that happened to me. I would never do that. Like I have, n- I cannot tell you <laughs> that I, I cannot tell you enough how much I do the opposite of that. Like for me, it is so juicy in my body when someone, when a man tells me, I find you so attractive I would love to make love with you. Let's sit down and like talk about it. Like, how do you feel in your body? Are you comfortable with this? Like, what do you like with sex? And and so I even made this thing where I was like, okay, I am fine with this, but the men that I'm dating have so much programming around sex. And they're so like, are we going to have sex? We're we not going to have sex because that's what they, through porn and through a lot of societal program, have created this energy around that's when they are actually going to let the love in 
So it's like for them, the programming is if we have sex and she loves me and she likes me and I get this approval and I love myself instead of emotionally connected. And so what I started to do, and I really invite all of you guys to do this, is if when you first meet someone, I started telling them, I made this like a really amazing opportunity for connection with me and someone that I was interested in, where I would say to them on the first date or like anytime we were like obvious, it was obvious that we were connecting and there was some romance there. I would tell them, I'm really interested in you and I would love to explore this further. The thing that makes me feel really safe in my body. And I started doing this with everyone I'm interested in is that I would like to have four times where we're connecting romantically or just on adventures or going on dates, whatever, before we decide if we want to have sex together. And if we do, I want it to be where we're actually talking about it and we're like both on the same team and we're super excited about it. And it's like something that we are co-creating together. Because imagine so many men are like, it's so much pressure that is put on them to to like do everything in bed it's like they're just like they need to know how to perform they need to like make you orgasm they do that. and then women are just there like i don't know what to do but i don't feel safe and da, da, da. and i'm like why can't we just co-create this really beautiful safe space where it's like a way to connect to each other and so what i okay i will tell you when i started doing this it was amazing because one the guy's like wow she likes me enough to like tell me this and like i respect her so much and what i would say to them is you know, after, if it goes as far as it, like, I'm like, of course, at any point, either of us can say to each other, we don't want to hang out anymore, or like, you know, whatever happens, happens. But after the fourth date, I want us to really sit down and talk about it. Like, do we want to have sex with each other? And I want it to be like something really fun, you know? And then like, if it's a no for either of us, if it's not a fuck yes, then it's a no. Uh, but I would love for us to co-create that experience together. And you know what ends up happening is like on these dates, like, you know, the, the second day, then what will happen is like, because we're already in this getting to know process of like, do we want to sleep together? Do we want to merge our energies in this way? Is we start talking about sex and we start getting super juicy with each other. Like, what do you like? What makes you feel safe in your body? What have you tried? You know? And like, and then of course, like, it's not like I'm like a nun where I'm like, okay, we can't touch each other. Like then we'd like make out and then we like enjoy like really slowly getting to know each other sexually and, and intimately, energetically and see if our bodies want to have sex. Because, you know, after three times, I, the four, the four date thing I've, I heard from a relationship coach and I was like, I want to try that. And then it worked really well. And so I kept going. I told all my friends to do it. But apparently after the third, after three times, like our habits are formed through threes, apparently, like in our bodies, like three is a very spiritual number energetically in the universe, all the things. And so, you know, you can, you can really feel into your body after three times with someone or three, three days of a habit, you know, like they say like three weeks, three, three days, three weeks, three years is how you make a habit. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? All I, all I mean is that I felt a very inner, big energetic clarity in my body. So I felt very clear in my body of whether I wanted to sleep with someone after the third date. And, and even if I felt really clear about it after the first date, it was still such a beautiful way for me to build trust with my body by waiting and being so clear with the other person. Because, and I think another thing is all of this builds connection with you and the person that you're interested in because you're, talking about it and you're communicating on it the whole way through so I think a lot of times with sex it becomes this like you know are we waiting for approval from the other person or like you know basically are they going to reject me or not reject me and when you co-create this experience together you take that off the table of like whether we're rejecting or not rejecting each other because it's like I just need to honor my body and I'm building respect for my body and my relationship with my body comes first before my relationship with anyone else. And if you want to come in on that and like, you know, join that situation, then I invite you and you to honor your body. And then it's just so beautiful. And then what I will tell you also is if a guy or a woman, whoever you're asking to do this, if they have a really hard time honoring you and waiting for dates to sleep with you, you should not allow them to have sex with you. You should not enter into that situation because that means that they cannot honor you and your boundaries and what's good for your body. 
and this is something I say in all of my podcasts is if someone is disrespecting you honoring your body, then they are not allowed in your life. So I really just want to like let that sink in because some people are like really shy about speaking up for these things. We have so much programming around, you know, speaking up and allowing ourselves to be heard in our needs, especially women, but men just as much, you know, in different ways. And so when we allow ourselves to have this opportunity to be like, this is what I need to do for my body. And I want to co-create this experience with you. This is, it's so beautiful and it's something that is like life changing. I will tell you when I did this, start doing this, I was like, wow, because I have such a good like BS radar, like I can see through people, but it gave me so much more clarity because when you start having sex with someone right away, you start mixing your energy with them and your body tries to just, your body's like, okay, well, we already allowed ourselves to be this close to someone. Let's just try to make it work. And this is when dysfunctional situations start happening is when you have sex really soon with someone before you're allowing your body to check in because our body knows our body is so intelligent it has its own you know in brain in our hearts and our bodies and it's just like it will tell us very quickly what our intellectual brain will find out three months later you know if you give yourself three three dates with someone and four dates with someone your body can tell you even and always listen Even if your rational brain's like, oh, they're so cute or "Ah, we look so good together. We have so much fun together or like I love our intellectual connection. It doesn't matter if you don't have if you don't feel good in your body around someone because I say all of that because I have done all of those things where I'm like trying to rationalize it mentally in my head. What my body is telling me very clearly that it doesn't feel safe or it doesn't want to keep connecting with this person. So always honor your body. And then you will have the best orgasms ever. Okay, I'm going to drink some tea, letting all this sink in. I invite you to take a deep breath. Okay, I want to share some more about porn. So for many, this is reading from this guy on Instagram again. For many women, emotional intimacy comes before physical intimacy, not the other way around. When women feel emotionally safe and connected with their partner, they are more likely to open to physical intimacy. But when emotional intimacy is lacking, physical intimacy can become unfulfilling, even uncomfortable. That's why it's so important for men to understand that building emotional intimacy is essential in creating a loving and satisfying sexual relationship. So what does it mean (laughs) to create emotional intimacy? It says, healthy and loving intimacy is built on a foundation of mutual respect, trust, safety, equality, and vulnerability. While in porn, the foundation is centered around abuse, violence, control, domination, and unsafety. And this is so true. Like when you look at like most porn, I mean, I'm someone who my, there's something called the erotic blueprint, which I invite you to look up. Um, I love it. And there's there's a show on Netflix called Sex, Love, and Goop sex love and goop g-o-o-p um and it's really amazing and in there they have this thing called the erotic blueprint and it's talking about like different ways that you get turned on and for me like i get turned on through energy and kink like i really enjoy power dynamics like i really enjoy like you know being submissive and getting tied up in shibari and like all this stuff what do i not enjoy i do not enjoy someone being abusive and you know I remember and like causing pain in a way where it hurts me like that's not love like I remember one spiritual teacher telling me Brittany you have sexual abuse still stored in your body energetically I'm going to help you work this out but one thing I need to help you to allow yourself to let go of this programming is anytime it hurts or there's pain you need to tell yourself pain is not pleasure pain pain is not what I want in my body. And I want to tell you all of this stuff because also porn has programmed us to believe that somehow pain is something that is a good thing and that we need to just endure it. And I'm like, fuck that. That is programming that just makes us even feel more disconnected from our bodies. It makes us feel more disconnected from the person because if someone is causing you pain after you have sex, do you feel connected to that person? No, you feel like you want to, your body at least wants to run away from them. 
and that's not <laughs> something that's going to cause more connection and beautiful things in the world like and some of this might sound obvious but I really just want you to like let it sink into your unconscious because we have had so much programming around pornography and so much programming around that we need to just you know toughen up and take it and I'm like that is the opposite like I would just want to go and like give all of your guys's inner children like hugs like imagine you being a little kid and someone hitting you and being like oh that's love and I'm like you would just be like why are you hitting me like that's not and you just cry because like that's not nice you know but somehow it has been one of the most insidious which means like the most like evil way that has like slid into the sexual industry is that somehow pain is pleasure and what I'm trying to tell you is there's a very fine line between power dynamics and being on the edge of like pain, like what is pleasure to pain, but knowing that you are safe and that your partner will always make you feel safe and will never create actual pain in your body that can create more safety and healing for you. But you have to actually feel safe enough to go through that. And you actually have to have a partner who understands how to hold a safe space And so for me, who is like, if you don't know what shibari is, shibari is like when they tie you up with ropes and there's this whole thing, this industry, I'm I'm here on Copanyang, where it's a very like tantric island, sexual island where these people are doing workshops and they're just tying people up. And I'm like, do you not understand that when you are in shibari, the whole point is your connection with the person who is tying you up and them, you feeling so safe in your body to turn your physical safety over to this person, trusting that they will always cause you pleasure, that they will always protect you and they will never bring pain into your body. And at any moment, if anything hurts, you can speak up and they will create more safety and they will take away the pain. And then these people are just like, I'm getting tied up and it's, it's painful, but I'm just going to push through. And I'm like, what the fuck are you guys? I have a lot of feelings about this. So just, um, let me just imprint this pain. We do not like pain. If it hurts, speak up and stop. Pain is not pleasure. Pleasure is pleasure. Feeling safe in your body is pleasure. Feeling open and receptive and ready to receive. That is pleasure feeling connected and like trusting and hel- and like feeling held emotionally that is pleasure that is what we're here for and that is what creates more beautiful things in the world so the last thing I want to share about this guy on Instagram he said the hard truth is that you and I he's talking about to men and millions of other men do not know what women want and that's okay but we can accept this and take the first step towards becoming acquainted with their needs and desires which means actively listening, welcoming feedback, and having open communication, and surrendering what we think we know. This is such an interesting thing to say. Okay, so that's the last thing I'm going to say about that guy, but I want to apply it into my own life. And I found this really interesting that Faraday sent me this this post this morning because him and I this week, like, everything I share in my podcast is also what's happening in my life. You know, everything is connected. And (laughs) I personally I have had sex with probably um around 50 people in my life and that's not counting people who I have made out with or this not I've had sex with a lot of like I don't know what a lot of people is but for me that's a lot of people they have all been I would say 99.9 of them have been percent of them have been amazing men who have just like really held space for me and made me feel so juicy in my body I remember the first time it was like the third guy I'd ever slept with. Like first guy I ever slept with was my husband. I was married to him for six years from when I was six, 18 to 24. And then I had a guy that I like was my like long-term boyfriend. And then after that I started traveling. I've been traveling to over 50 countries, <laughs> so many beautiful men in all these countries. And the third guy I ever slept with, he was like really, he would not penetrate me unless I had already orgasmed. So And he verbally told me, he said, it is my job to bring pleasure into your body. And then I can receive more from like, it's my job to bring pleasure to your body. And then I can check in and see if I can bring even more pleasure through penetration and and then bring pleasure to himself. But he was like, it is my job and my duty to make you feel safe and to bring pleasure to you first. And I just remember being like, whoa. 
I was in Italy and no, I was in Portugal in this beautiful mansion. I was in this co-living company that I had started and he was someone who came on my trip. Um, and he was like five years older than me. I was like probably 25. So he's 30. And we had these, um, I was in this, like, I was in one of the main, uh, bedrooms and I just remember they had this like huge, um, beautiful bed and bed posts that had these, uh, wooden things that like held um, like carved wooden posts that were kind of like coming down from the bedposts and whenever he would go down on me I would just like hold on to them and I just remember one time I was like moaning so loud and it was so good that I like pulled off one of the bedpost things and I was just like holding this like piece of like wood in my hand and just being like what is going like this is what sex can be like okay now I understand you know like because up until that point I had never really experienced that much pleasure with someone else and then I'm so grateful to this man because one of the like one of my first real um you know when I left my cult left my ex-husband and like really went into the world was someone who was older and very experienced himself in sex but also really experienced in holding a safe space like he was like I don't care how long it takes. This is the point. We're having fun. And we would just like roll around in bed all day long. And he would go down on me or like finger me or just hold me sometimes and like listen to me talk about my emotions. And then, you know, just like sometimes he would just like put his hand like on the outside of my vagina and just hold, just hold it there. And I just remember getting so turned on by the fact that he was not trying to penetrate me or do anything. He was literally just holding space for me. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then I said to myself, this is my standard. Like this is what I will receive and what I choose to have in my life with men. And I will tell you that I'm so grateful to have a reality and choose a timeline where I would say again, 99% of the men that I have slept with since then have been amazing and like so holding space for me and so just like enjoying my pleasure and enjoying me receiving pleasure like they would get more pleasure from that than them penetrating me and having sex so all of this fast forward to me finding my twin flame the love of my life Faraday Beck I love him very much he is the person that I we never know what's happening tomorrow but as of right now I choose to spend the rest of my life with this person I'm so grateful for him (laughs) so um we have come into like when we first got together we were just having so much fun just like connecting and like flowing in and out of sex and like just uh, all the things and then I hit this point where I was like I would like to receive more pleasure and it was so um (laughs) even shy I was feeling shy about telling him like you know I don't really like the way you're going down on me. You know, like I didn't, I didn't, I don't feel that much pleasure from it, but you know, like how, especially someone that you're like, I want to spend the rest of my life with. Honestly, normally if this happened with a guy and I wasn't like committed to him and like really wanting to make things work, I would probably just be like, peace out because I have slept with enough men to know that there are men who know exactly what they're doing. And I will tell you that it's the energy of how they hold me and the energy of how they hold space emotionally for me. And then physically that matters to me the most. And if there's someone who doesn't understand how to do that, there's plenty of women out there that they can sleep with, but I know what I'm worth and I know what I want to be held in. And I know the depths of my pleasure And so normally in the situation, I would probably just be like, peace out. (laughs) You can go have sex with other women, but I want to have sex with, you know, someone who understands what to do. Like, I don't want to raise anyone. I don't want to teach them how to do this. But for a day, I love him. (laughs) Uh, So I was kind of in this like brain, like clusterfuck where I was like, what do I do? Because it is not very sexy for like... (laughs) How do I put this? When you are co-creating um, a sexual world with someone, it's just like any other world, you know? It's like you you both bring things to the table. If someone uh, doesn't even understand their, that, that this is a thing, so if someone doesn't even understand how to hold space or that there has been programming by pornography or this or that, or that there's so much you can experience before you get to penetration. If they're not th- like Faraday has never taken even Tantra class or anything. And I have done all of the research. Like he jokingly always calls me the sex goddess. And like on the Island I've hosted 
so many play parties. I've hosted so many safe sexual spaces for people. And so I have seen all of the things. I've experienced most of the things. <laughs> I've received mostly all the pleasure. And I just kind of was like, how do I... I just wish I could take like a JPEG drive and like stick it in his brain and download to him all of the information and then we could just play, you know? But I was kind of just stuck because we were in this mode. I started to see like a pattern of how we would make love and it was so beautiful and so flowy, but not very deep, not very like, you know, let's really slow down. Let's experience more pleasure. Let's like, there's tons of stuff that we can do before penetration. There's like this, there's that. And it's not about... It is not about, I want to put out, it's not about the physical stuff. It's about the emotional capacity and uh, the emotional awareness of how to hold space. And that is something that I didn't know how, I didn't know how to teach him. Like I was like, I had just, you know, in a very beautiful way, just like called in men who understood how to do this. And, and I want to also say that Faraday is really good at, everything else like creating such a beautiful world for us like handling everything in a 3d for me and he's so eager and wants to learn how to do all this and so this is where I came to I was like wow there's so many people who just don't know you know and they just and, and I was just like how do I translate this and then he was like why don't you just tell me you know like in the moment like when it's happening can you just tell me I don't like that very much can you do this and this is when I realized that I had my own blockages because I had gotten to a point where I just knew exactly what I liked, but then that closes me off to even more pleasure because, you know, and I also was so used to being with men who knew how to bring that out of me. They knew how to host me. They knew how to navigate and like feel in and energetically connect to my pleasure and just kind of like ride the wave with me, which is a very deep and beautiful <laughs> journey. Um, but then I had to realize that I still needed to open myself up enough. If you love someone that much, then of course you want to like go on this journey with them. Right. And like, how do I, and then I was like, okay, I have to slow down and just start speaking what my truth is. And this is when I realized because in every other way of my life, I'm like, yeah, with Verity, I'm like, I don't like that or like this and that. And I, you know, I just tell him straight up what I like and I don't like in a way that's nice. You know, I'm not like being mean. I'm just like, this doesn't feel good. Can we go here? Or like, I'd really love a massage right now. My neck's hurting. And, but I was like, why is this so hard for me to do it in sex? And I'm like, wow, I still have programming. I still have shame around speaking my truth and taking up space. Because men are so programmed that they have to already know what pleases you and like, you know, like already uh, quote unquote perform and make you feel good and orgasm five times and they can go tell their friends and they feel like a man, which is not true. Like the, none of that actually brings any connect. I mean, if it's done in that way where that's where there's a goal, that's already like, you know, killing the vibe. And then women like we have so much capacity for pleasure but it's so programmed into us that our needs don't matter. Like look at pornography, like women, the guy in the porn video is not asking her, does this feel good? He's not like, how could I bring more pleasure to you? Let me hold space. Let me slow down and actually feel into your body and see if this feels good for you and ask you and check in. No, he's like fucking ramming his penis into her and being like, let's just go harder and like, like and pulling her hair and like doing all these things that I'm like, I can feel into her body, even in uh, knowing that this is a porn, like even that woman who's consenting to making a porn video, I can tell that she is not enjoying this. And that makes me feel so gross in my body. And then I'm like, this is how men are programmed to believe. And women are just programmed if they see that, or they just know the culture to just kind of be quiet and take it. And I'm like, fuck all of that. And so I was like, wow, this is my biggest rebellion I can do, even for all the women out there, is to figure out how to speak up in bed even more so than I was, because I think I was just calling in men who knew how to do it already. But then I was shortcutting my own growth of speaking up for myself. And so you know what I did yesterday? So, so, so Friday's amazing. So I wake up yesterday morning, I'm a little bit sick right now. And I was like, just resting and sleeping in more. And he's like listening to his head, like his ear pods, but his, the computer is on the counter in the kitchen. I can see what he's listening or what he's listening to like on the YouTube. And it's all about like women's pleasure and like fingering and like this and that. And I was like, I have never watched 
educational videos on sex before because I've always just like I am sex you know like I don't need to go watch how to do it because he kept telling me like I don't I don't want to go learn from other people I want to learn from you because all these people like they just want to get in their heads about it and I'm like what is he talking about and then I so I got curious so yesterday I just like went through some of the videos that he's watched and I was like what the fuck this is how people are learning about sex if they're trying not to watch porn and you guys, it's so terrible. It's like, ugh. there's this one lady who, okay, I want to just first say, I'm happy that she's giving people the alternative to pornography. So she has a, a YouTube channel called Sexplanation. But the woman herself, she is speaking so fast into the camera in a monotone voice. And it feels so disembodied to me. Like she's not connected to her body. And then she's like, and then if you finger her like this and then and she's talking so fast that I'm like, what? And I'm like, this is how people are learning about sex. Like, what about the being like, let's take a deep breath together. Let's like check in. Like, how are you feeling in your body right now? Like, how are you feeling emotionally right now? Like, what are you leaving at the door that you don't want to bring into this sexual connection? Like, let's uh, let's process that. Let's like, let's just like hold each other and like breathe together for a while and like yeah that's and so <laughs> what ended up I was just I just got really angry I was like I'm gonna make a podcast about sex I'm gonna like talk to people about this like this is the only thing they have to go on like this makes me so sad I'm sure there's really good stuff out there you guys but I have like Faraday has also started researching a ton and he's like yeah I was researching a ton my friends have looked at all this stuff and these videos have like millions and millions of views like this woman's YouTube has a million subscribers and I'm like okay so this is what we're working with so you know what I did yesterday she I started watching someone I was like on the bed and I'm sick right so I was like I don't want to have penetrative sex today like I just want to and also I was kind of like worked up about all of this stuff I was like I want to be held in my body like better and I like I my body did not want Faraday to like penetrate me until he learned more and like I felt like he could hold space for me more but then he was like, I don't know how to do that. Can you help me? And he really wanted to learn. And then I was just like, ah. And so I was watching this video. And then I just, he came over just to check on me and see how I'm doing. And he was going to go leave and do some errands. And like, um, and he was just making sure I was okay. And I was just like, this is, I was like, pause the video. I'm like, this is ridiculous. This is what people are watching. He's like, I know. This is why I don't want to, da And then I was just like, have you tried this position? Like, do you know this thing? And he's like, no, what do you mean? And it's like this thing where you, the guy takes his penis and he just rubs it on the outside of your vagina, like, but going downwards, like he's on top of you and he's like just rubbing it and like putting the tip of his penis, like on your clitoris and just like, and you get some oil and you just rub it. Like, you no, know, no expectation of penetration just like we're just rubbing against each other and he's like whole and I was like can you just I just want to show you and I just got really excited I was like can you just I just want to show this to you have you ever done this before and like can you just hold me and then he was like oh my god this feels amazing no I have never no one has ever shown this I'm like what are people doing and then I'm like and he's like this is so great and I love you and I was like please stop talking can you just I love you but please stop talking can you just feel into your body right now? Cause I want to feel into my body right now. And he was like, yeah, of course. And then he like held me and he was just like rubbing himself against me. And I was like, this is so amazing. And then this is when I, and then he, and then like later on, he just kind of put his hand over the top of my vagina and just held me and like put his other hand on my chest where my heart is. And just like, was like breathing with me. And I was like, so I started crying and I was just so, I felt so held. I was like, this is what I have been really asking for. You know, it's just no agenda. When you take the agenda off the table of like penetrative sex to male orgasm, there is so much to explore. This is why I created play parties. If you've never been, or if you've never heard of my vanilla vanilla play parties, I have a whole podcast on it. I invite you to listen to that. But the main point of why I created them without penile penetration, so like at the play parties, the penis cannot go into anal or vagina and everything else is on the table, everything else you can do. But when you take penile penetration off the table, it takes away a lot of this brainwashing that we have that it's like the man needs to orgasm right now. And then you're like, wow, there is so much pleasure to be had and then, and then the woman's like, wow, I feel so safe because 
now I can, there's nowhere to go. And now I can actually drop into my body and all women are capable of multiple orgasms. And like when a guy (laughs) brings her to orgasm, why would he stop there? There is like three more in there at least. I mean, unless she's feeling already complete and so excited and juicy and doesn't want to be touched. Because when you hit a certain point of orgasm, it's like you're just so excited and you don't want to be touched anymore. But like once you get to that point, like until that point, why don't you just create more opportunity for pleasure for her and just keep going? (laughs) And I'm just like, what are people doing? Okay, so yeah, uh, this so much to say. Let me just go back to my notes. I think I went on a really long tangent, which I don't remember what I said. Um, so yeah, orgasm. Like I asked people in Instagram, what do you guys want to hear my podcast? And I had multiple women say orgasms, please talk about orgasms. So I have a whole thing here on orgasms that I want to share. I might even make a whole nother podcast about this. But the main thing I want to say is Again, we are all capable of multiple orgasms. And it makes me so sad when I hear women say, I have never had an orgasm in my life that I know of. This is not putting any blame on you. I will tell you that when I was married to my ex-husband, from 18 until 24 years old, so I was married for six years, we had sex probably like every day. And a lot of it was I was like this young, horny girl. You know, I was a virgin when I got married. And I really wanted to have sex. My ex-husband was also raised in the Jehovah's Witness religion. And so he didn't have, you know, he wasn't even allowed to like masturbate. So like neither of us had any sexual education. So we kind of just like rolled around in bed a lot and like figured it out. But I will tell you that there wasn't a lot of orgasms happening. I think in my six year marriage, I probably orgasm to my knowledge, like where I had like a really good like G spot orgasm, like three times, three times. And I had sex almost every single day for six years so like what the fuck was I doing the rest of the time I mean I was enjoying pleasure but I think I still wasn't like and I I don't think he was creating a lot of space for me to like drop into my body I didn't know how to speak up for that I didn't know how what that even meant I didn't know how to connect my body and so we were just like these little rabbits just like fucking each other and it makes me like want to go back and like hug her that version of me that thought that that's that's what love was and and I still had fun like I didn't ever feel okay I'll take that back my ex-husband started to get become an alcoholic towards the end of his our, our marriage and I would wake up sometimes in the middle of the night from him coming home from drinking and him sleep fucking me which I will tell you If someone has sex with you while you are asleep, that is rape. That is, there is no way that someone can consent to sex while they're sleeping. Unless you already have this with your partner and you're like, this makes me feel so juicy to wake up to you pleasuring me. And again, I will say, be very careful about agreeing to that because you have to be feel really, really safe in your body and feel very, very safe with your partner to agree to that. And some people, they do feel that safe. And I'm so happy for you that you do. Do not pressure yourself into saying yes to that. Because I got to the point where I felt so unsafe even sleeping in bed with him because at any moment, he would try and have sex with me and put his finger in me and he would be so drunk that the next day he wouldn't even remember what he did. And when I would tell him, he would feel really bad. This is not okay. So I have done my own work to release all of that stuff. But like when I tell people about like my own like, you know, sexual, (laughs) my own things that were like, you know, bad things that have happened to me sexually, they're like, I don't understand how you're still, you know, letting people (laughs) into you. I don't understand how you're still having sex. And I'm like, because... I had a relationship with myself first sexually and I really enjoy having sex with myself. I really enjoy masturbation. I really enjoy right before this podcast, I masturbated and I was like connecting to all that is. I was connecting to myself, like my higher self. I was bringing all the energy down into my body. I was seeing multiple timelines. I was like multidimensional. I was just like, everything is fucking amazing. And then I'm like, yeah, okay, I can do this podcast because I, we all have this opportunity to create this beautiful sexual connection with ourselves. And then when we choose whoever we want to share that with, that's like a plus, that's like a bonus. But the first relationship you have sexually is with yourself. 
So one more thing I want to say before I, I get into the orgasms is the more that you love yourself, the more that you will attract in someone who loves you and your body. Everything is a reflection. So I want to repeat this. The more that you love yourself, the more you will attract in someone who loves you and your body. So if you are in a situation right now where you feel like your partner doesn't love you enough he, he, or somehow he's putting you down or she's putting you down or you just don't feel good in your body around them, you don't feel like you love yourself around them, this is an opportunity for you to love yourself more. Because when you love yourself more, you raise your standards of what you will choose to allow in. And I had this happen to me with the last guy that I dated where the last major relationship I had before Faraday where like I got to a point where I was like, I choose to allow myself to be with someone who loves me at this standard, at this level where they're open with their love. They're able to communicate it. They're able to be emotionally available and mature and like talk about it. And I, my whole body was not wanting to have sex with him anymore because my standard had risen. And so when you love yourself, your standards naturally rise. And then the people that do not meet those, those standards and are not able to meet you, they will fade out of your life or you will choose to let them go. You can separate with love from people who do not honor you and do not meet your standards. And that's different than expecting them to be the person that you you want them to be. You have to let go of expectations. It's like, this is why I always say, even when Faraday was coming into my life, I could feel this like divine masculine energy coming in. I was really ready for my soulmate, my twin flame, whatever you want to call it, the person that I loved and I could have the super deep connection with. And I could feel this coming in like all year long, like months and months before him and I got together. And even when he was in my vortex and like we were kind of, you know, like dancing around each other, I kept saying to myself, this or something better. This person or someone who is more suited for me, who loves me even more, who is more of a fit for me, because my relationship with myself was more important than the expectation that Faraday had to be the person that I wanted him to be. Of course, I was like, I hope that's him. I love him. He's so handsome. I love hanging out with him. I love everything about him. But, you know, this or something better. And so I just want to say to you that you are more than capable of having super juicy sex, super amazing, deep emotional connection with someone that who loves you and is so excited to spend time with you and lo and loves holding space for you and talking about your emotions with you and also who loves your body like physically like Faraday like fucking worships my body like he's like I just love every single inch of you like last night he was even like touching my toes and he was like I love your toes too and it was just like every single part of me he just like worships this is the standard. This is the standard that I choose to have in my life. And you can also have this in your life. You have to love yourself at that standard first. You have to be able to look in the mirror and be like, I fucking love, like I do this like all year long, especially I would look at, I would have mirror meditations where I would look at myself and I would be like, I honor every single part of my body. And I would like really honor my body and like feel into it and just love it and give it so much juiciness and I was like, yeah, I'm amazing. And especially after masturbation, I would go and sit in front of the mirror and I would just be like, yeah, I am fucking vibrating and I know this. And this is what I choose to tr attract into my life is someone who also sees this, someone who also sees me, knows it, honors it and wants to merge energies with this. And this is what I want you guys to do. And I w and you deserve this. Okay. So I will spend the last part talking about orgasms because I love them. Um, so I use orgasms for manifesting and going into what I call the template reality. So this is like outside of this 3D reality. There is many more dimensions. If you don't know this, then I invite you to tell yourself you feel safe enough to open your body to this because there is so much out there than this 3d reality we sometimes we call it the spiritual world whatever you want to call it when you orgasm especially for women this is the opportunity for you to go into the spiritual world and pull in 
ma- what you're manifesting into the 3D reality. So I've read books on sex magic before and I found I find this really interesting because I was already doing this before like anyone told me this is sex magic. Um, and what is magic? Magic is just moving energy in a way that's conscious. So when you do sexual magic, it's like you have an intention before you get started. And I love doing this with a partner too, like doing sex magic together with my partner where I'm like, okay, you know, we're about to make love. Let's make a little ceremony. Let's light some candles and some incense. And I would love to manifest more abundance for us in our lives in whatever way, you know? And then we, we both say, okay, yeah, we love that. And then we agree that when we orgasm, we are going to really, call this in and like and what what that means is that you feel really good in your body for already having it in your life so you pretend like in your body that you already have this and then you're like "Mm." the moment that you hit orgasm like for me what happens is I go straight into the spiritual world and I can already see the timeline of me already having the thing so for instance let's just put like I want more money or whatever And then I like can see all these different ways for me to pull in more money into my life or more abundance in different ways. And then I just feel super juicy in my body. I connect that energy and that vision with my orgasm. And then I just let it go. And I release control. I I surrender to whatever is coming, whatever is best, whatever my higher self thinks is best for me to receive this abundance. And then I imagine like my energy body merging with Faraday's energy body. I imagine when he... When he when he hits orgasm and he comes inside of me, that me pulling that energy through my body and also adding to me and what I'm manifesting when I'm pulling. It's all sex magic. There's so much I could say about this. And most people will just be like, what the fuck is she talking about? And I will tell you that it's real. And I don't care if you believe me or not, because this is something that is like a whole other level. But first, you have to feel safe in your body in order to get to the level. So I think I might talk about that on a different podcast. Um, yeah, orgasming is just energy moving through our bodies in a way that feels pleasurable. So if you feel safe in your body and you have a strong connection and relationship with your body, then you will, then your body trusts you enough to allow yourself to feel pleasure with others. So there's something around having a vagina where we need to have the space held for our pleasure. So no rushing to penetration. So again, this is what I was saying earlier, take the agenda off the table. Like even when you're first being with someone, say like have a time where you're being sexual with them, where you're like, I don't want to do, I don't want to do penile penetration. I just want to, this is what Faraday and I did yesterday. We like totally rolled around in the bed. Yes. And had so much fun without penile penetration. And he and I asked him afterwards, like, how was that for you? And he was like, I felt like I was orgasming all over my whole body. And I was like, welcome to being a woman. (laughs) Because I'm like, this is how I feel all the time. And he's like, what? This is not fair. Like women have so much more opportunity for pleasure. I'm like, yes. But if you tune into my body and you slow down enough and you take penetration off the the table, then you can also feel this just as much as I am. And he's like, what? Why have I been rushing this whole time? And I'm like programming. So another thing I'll say if you're a man listening to this is no one wants to feel that the other person is giving pleasure just to get it over with. So if you're a man giving pleasure to a woman, she can feel if you're like, okay, I just want to get her to orgasm so then I can penetrate her and then I can like, you know, get to a part where like I'm enjoying it. And it's like, I invite you to tune into your energetic body to the point where you're feeling what she's feeling in your in her body. This is possible. All you have to do is close your eyes and slow down, take a couple deep breaths. If you're giving her oral sex or if you're fingering her, just try and imagine like the golden energy moving in her body and like connect to it and just be like this golden warm energy that's just like starting to build in her vagina while you give her pleasure. And how it's like going up her whole body and she's like moaning and like twisting and turning. And then you're like, hmm, this is amazing. Wow. Oh, and then you invite it into your body. That is the end goal. She loves that. She's like so excited that this is happening. And if you try and rush it and like even Faraday, like this is something he said yesterday because I shared this Instagram post I did and I was like, you know, the, the divine masculine, she's, he's in service to the divine feminine's pleasure and and he literally read this post and he was like 
but that does that mean I have to go down on you every time? And I was like, where does it say in this post that you have to give me oral sex every single time? Because he's like, but you do, you do like it when we make love in nature and it's spontaneous and it's quickies. And I was like, where does it say that we have to have you know, all of this foreplay for two hours before I was like, I was like, none of that. All it says is you need to be in tune with her pleasure. So if you can slow down enough and take penetration off the table and your pleasure off the table first and put her pleasure first, you will realize that by doing that, she actually can feel it and she will come into her pleasure faster or it doesn't really matter. The thing, time, throw time out the window. But what I've noticed within my own body is when I can feel that the guy is really holding space for me and he's got nowhere to go and he's not trying to like put his dick in me and he's just like holding space for my pleasure, my whole body just starts relaxing and I start like coming into my body and I'm like, oh, and it feels so good. And then, and I just like start coming into climax like so much faster than if you, I can feel him being like, okay, and then I look here and then I do that. And it's like, he's in his brain and I can just feel that it's like this calculated thing where he's trying to bring me to pleasure so then he can have pleasure. Like those are two separate dimensions that we're in. I invite you to come into the dimension where you're connecting to the woman's pleasure. And I'm saying this like masculine, feminine, but whoever is sleeping with whoever, two men, two women, it doesn't really matter. It's all about like whoever's in the mode of receiving, whoever's giving. Because when I give t- pleasure to Faraday and I'm going, and I'm giving him a blowjob, I close my eyes and I imagine the energy moving through his body and I like really connect to his body. And I'm like so sensitive and I go really slow at first and I'm just like really holding space for his pleasure. And I know that this is the most amazing thing for him because he has told me, he's like, I've never had anyone go down and I've never had any received oral sex like this before ever. And most men that I've ever given a blowjob to has said the same thing because women, like, we're so disconnected from our bodies. And so if you're not connected to your body, there's no way that you're going to be able to connect to another body. And for me, I'm very connected to my body. And then I have enough capacity to connect to the person I'm connect, like having sex with and hold space for them connecting to their body. And for men, like this is, can be one of the most healing things for them also to have a woman who's really connected to her body and holding space for him and like giving him a really good blowjob or like really connecting to his body in a way where he can drop in, you know? And this is where I, I really want to say that like if it's a heterosexual relationship um, or whoever is, has the more feminine energy in the relationship, they are leading on the sexuality. So women, we actually need to, or whoever is the, the more feminine energy in this situation, we are leading on this because, and I'm not saying it always has to be like this, but right now in the way society is, women just have more connection to our bodies. Like because we have our periods every month, because we are more in our emotions, we can use this as a superpower in our pleasure. And then we can by vocalizing what feels good for us and by vocalizing our standards and what we choose to have in bed, we can attract in men who want to learn and want to be guided into this pleasure. Like yesterday, Faraday said, that was so much fun for me when you were like, I like this, I like that. Can you please stop talking? Can we just enjoy ourselves? He was like, when you told me to stop talking, it was so nice because then I just got out of my head and got into my body and I was like enjoying it a thousand times more. And for me, I was feeling shy about telling him to be quiet in the past because I was like, oh, I don't want to tell him what to do, you know, but in my body, I wanted him to be quiet because I just wanted to enjoy it. And so by vocalizing it, I was actually helping him drop into his body and receive more pleasure himself. So women, we are here to take the lead. This is our sexual revolution. It all needs to happen. It's happening. Um, So yeah, um, the last thing I'll say in this podcast is that we all feel shy sometimes to communicate what we like in bed because there's so much programming around and shame and guilt around speaking up our desires and like claiming our, our pleasure and our sexuality. Our sexuality is our creative life force. So when you think about meeting all of your survival needs after that, the things that we want most in life is connection and creativity, like creative expression in order to have connection and creativity 
we need to be connected to our sexuality. And I'm not saying you need to be having sex with other people. I'm saying you need to be connected to your own sexuality. You need to have a relationship with your own sexuality. And again, that doesn't mean you need to be masturbating all the time. Take all of that programming out the window that it has to happen in that way. I'm just saying you need to be connected to your body and connected to your pleasure. And pleasure, sometimes I get turned on by a really good bath. Sometimes I get turned on by like getting a really nice massage. I get so turned on in my whole body. And it's not about the person giving me a massage it's about me allowing myself to receive pleasure so if you want to have more pleasure in your life and you want to feel more like you have more orgasms or more great sex connect to your pleasure write a list of things that make you feel really good in your body and help you drop into your body and make you feel pleasurable start doing those things do one of them a day it can be you know getting your favorite drink it can be taking a bath it can be working out in the gym like sometimes when I work out I feel so good in my body and I feel so juicy and all the energy is flowing whatever it is just do more of it receive uh, give yourself permission to receive more pleasure in a way that feels really safe in your body okay I love you guys hope this helps let me know I'm always here and if you want to hear more things about sex let me know what those are and I'm happy to make more of a podcast and yeah have an amazing day sending you so much love